proportionality. Let's go at a constant speed. Hello, I'm so happy to see you again. In our previous session, we learned to calculate the ratio of two quantities, and today we will discover proportionality. We also spoke about group communication skills. Respecting others was a behavior that we also talked about. Today, we'll use our knowledge from our previous sessions to do an activity on bullying. Through this activity, we will define bullying together. Bullying is a word that people use a lot, but it is important to really understand what it means so that we know how to identify and recognize bullying in a situation when it happens. To start with, think about these two questions. One, what is bullying? Two, do you think that bullying involves people who respect each other? Once you have thought about these questions, take your time to read these three scenarios. One, in your class, there is someone who keeps calling your best friend names and sends him disrespectful messages. Your friend doesn't feel good about it. Two, your friend's older sister keeps hitting and kicking him when no one is looking. She also tells him not to tell anyone about it. If he does, she will hit him even more. Your friend feels threatened. Three, there is a teacher who keeps calling your friend bad words when she gets wrong answers. Sometimes the teacher says, there is no point in teaching your friend because she is not good. The other children start calling your friend names too. Your friend feels anxious. Now let us reflect on the scenarios by answering these questions. Which words in the scenarios show bullying? For example, in scenario one, Calling your friend names shows bullying. Are there more examples of bullying in the first scenario? Are there examples of bullying in the second scenario? Are there examples of bullying in the third scenario? Now let's move to the words that reflect the feelings of the person who is being bullied. In the first scenario, your best friend doesn't feel good about it. How about the second scenario? How does your friend feel? What word shows that? Now, move on to the third scenario and find how your friend feels. I agree with you. Calling names, sending disrespectful messages, hitting and threatening are all bullying actions. So bullying is when a person doesn't show respect for others. He or she hurts another person on purpose, especially when the other person can't or won't defend him or herself. I hope that was an awakening session. And now let's move on to our lesson on proportionality. In this lesson, you will learn to define two proportional magnitudes, recognize a proportional situation, calculate the fourth proportional, now, put on your kitchen apron. It's strawberry season. My cousins Charlotte, Sam, and I will make strawberry jam each at our own homes. My grandmother gave us her cookbook to help. Under the strawberry jam recipe, it is written that for each 4 kilograms of strawberries, 2 kilograms of sugar are needed. If I have 12 kilograms of strawberries, Charlotte has 2 kilograms and Sam has 1 kilogram. How much sugar does each one of us need? Look at this table to facilitate the calculation. According to Grandma's recipe, for each 4 kilograms of strawberries, 2 kilograms of sugar are needed. The ratio of the mass of sugar to that of strawberries must be the same in all the jams that my cousins and I prepare. The ratio of the mass of sugar to that of strawberries in my jam must be the same as 2 over 4. 
I have 12 kilograms of strawberries. So it is triple the mass of strawberries that is in grandma's recipe. How do I find the needed mass of sugar? Yes, I multiply two by three to find triple the amount too. So I need six kilograms of sugar. Charlotte has two kilograms of strawberries. She notices that this represents one sixth of the 12 kilograms of strawberries that I have. What should Charlotte do to calculate the mass of sugar that she will need? Yes, she should calculate a sixth of the amount of sugar I used as well. That is, she should divide six by six. So Charlotte needs one kilogram of sugar to make her jam. How do I find the mass of sugar that Sam needs to make his jam? He has one kilogram of strawberries. It is half the amount of strawberries that Charlotte has. Yes, we can choose to divide Charlotte's one kilogram of sugar by two. So Sam needs 0.5 kilograms of sugar for his one kilogram of strawberries. For one kilogram of strawberries, 0.5 kilograms of sugar are needed. Therefore, the mass of sugar is equal to the product of 0.5 by the mass of strawberries. The quotients of the mass of sugar divided by that of strawberries are equal to each other. All are equal to 0.5. We say that the mass of sugar and the mass of strawberries are two proportional magnitudes. The mass of sugar is proportional to the mass of strawberries. This means that whenever we have the mass of strawberries, we can find the mass of sugar that is needed by multiplying the mass of strawberries by 0.5. Point five is called the proportionality coefficient. It is the number by which the mass of strawberries is multiplied by to obtain the mass of sugar. In other words, 0.5 kilograms of sugar is needed for one kilogram of strawberries. Similarly, the mass of strawberries is proportional to the mass of sugar. The mass of strawberries is obtained by multiplying the mass of sugar by a constant. But what is this constant? Let's look at the table again. To obtain the mass of sugar from the mass of strawberries, you multiply by 0.5. So, to obtain the mass of strawberries from the mass of sugar, you divide by 0.5. We know that dividing by a number is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. Therefore, Dividing by 0.5 is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal, that is 1 over 0.5, which is equal to 2. The mass of strawberries is then the product of the mass of sugar by 2. The mass of strawberries is proportional to the mass of sugar, and 2 is the proportionality coefficient. This means that 2 kilograms of strawberries are needed for 1 kilogram of sugar. Let's complete the table. How much sugar is needed for 5 kilograms of strawberries? Yes, we multiply 5 by 0.5. 2.5 kilograms of sugar is needed for 5 kilograms of strawberries. Now what mass of strawberries is needed for 4 kilograms of sugar? Very good. We multiply 4 by 2 to obtain 8. 8 kilograms of strawberries are needed. To prepare strawberry jam, 8 kilograms of strawberries are needed for 4 kilograms of sugar. Let's stay in the kitchen, but this time to make pizza. There are several sizes of pizza. The size is determined by the length of the diameter of the dough. Of course, the mass of cheese required depends on the length of the diameter, but is it proportional? To answer this question, we need to figure out if regardless of the pizza size, the number by which we multiply the diameter to obtain the mass of cheese is constant or not. We multiply 25 by 90, 20 fifths, to get 90. To find out what number each diameter is multiplied by to obtain the corresponding mass, we must calculate the quotient of the mass divided by the diameter. 
90 over 25 is 3.6. So we multiply 25 by 3.6 to get 90. What number is multiplied by 30 to get 128? Yes, we start by finding the quotient of 128 over 30. The quotient is about 4.3. Similarly, we can calculate the quotient of 155 by 33. So, the number by which we multiply 33 to get 155 is about 4.7. Now compare the ratios of the mass of cheese to the diameter of the pizza. Are they equal? Of course not. The ratios are not equal. What do you conclude? Yes, the mass of cheese is not proportional to the diameter of the pizza. Now let's think about a different scenario. You are planning to travel with your friends to France and you want to stay in a hostel. A hostel is a hotel in which you can share a room with other people. On a booking site, you are looking for a hostel that offers four beds in a room. You want to know if you will get a price discount when you book for a group of several people. Here are the prices displayed based on the number of people. How do you know if there is a discount or not on a group booking? Just check whether the price is proportional to the number of people or not. What calculations should be made? Yes, you have to calculate the quotient of the price divided by the number of people. 23 over 1 is 23 divided by 1, so the quotient is 23. Then, what is your next step? Yes, we calculate the quotient of 46 over 2. Then what is the quotient? Yes, 23. And what will you do next? That's it. We need to check the value of 69 over 3. What is the quotient? Yes, 23 as well. And finally, calculate the quotient of 92 over 4. Yes, it is 23 too. What do you conclude? The four quotients are equal to each other and are equal to 23. The ratio of the price to the number of people is constant, regardless of the number of people. Therefore, the price is proportional to the number of people registered, and so there is no discount on a group booking. What does the proportionality coefficient 23 represent? Yes, the proportionality coefficient is the price to be paid per person. You are looking for good plans for your trip and are searching through a travel agency website that offers a guided tour in the Loire Valley. Booking online is an option, and this table shows the ticket price based on the number of tourists. Once again, you wonder if you can benefit from a discount on this tour by booking as a group. How can you know this? Yes, by finding the quotient of the price divided by the number of people. 55 over 1 is 55 divided by 1 to get 55. What is the quotient of 110 over 2? Yes, the quotient is 55 too. And what is the quotient of 165 over 3? It is 55 as well. And finally, let's check the coefficient of 200 over 4. Ah, 200 over 4 is 50 not 55. The quotient of 200 divided by 4 is different from the three other quotients. It's less. So what can you conclude? Yes, the price to be paid is not proportional to the number of people. There is a discount when a group of four people books for this guided tour. The price is reduced to become 50 euros per person. For three people or less, the price will be 55 euros per person. How about if we check proportionality in geometry? Here's a square. What formula can be used to calculate its perimeter using the length of its sides? 
Yes, the perimeter of a square is equal to four times the length of one of its sides. In this case, can we say that the perimeter of a square is proportional to the length of its side? Yes, they are proportional, since we multiply the side by the constant 4. Thus, the perimeter of a square is proportional to the length of its side and the proportionality coefficient is 4. We multiply the length of the side of the square by 4 to get the perimeter. What about the area? What is the formula of the area of a square? Yes, the area of a square is equal to the product of the length of a side by itself. Is the length of the side multiplied by a constant? No, the length of the side is not a constant. Let's complete this table to understand more. What is the area of a square with a 1 centimeter side? Yes. 1 times 1 equals 1. The area is 1 centimeter squared. What is the area of a square with a 2 centimeter side? 2 times 2 equals 4. So the area is 4 centimeters squared. What is the area of a square having a side that is 3 centimeters in length? Yes. 3 times 3 equals 9. So the area is 9 centimeters squared. And if the side of a square is 4 centimeters in length, the area is 16 centimeters squared. Are we multiplying the length of the side by the same number every time? No. So what can we conclude? The area of a square is not proportional to the length of its side. Now that we have defined and recognized two proportional quantities, we will learn how to calculate an unknown term in a proportional equality. We will be calculating the fourth proportional when the other three terms are known. The water flow from the tap is constant. Two liters of water flows from this tap in 15 seconds. How many liters of water flows in 27 seconds? As we have said, the water flow from this tap is constant. This means that the volume of water flow is proportional to the duration. Therefore, the two ratios are equal regardless of the duration. So 2 over 15 is equal to the volume to be found over 27. Let's use V to refer to the volume of water to be found. How do we calculate V? Use this table that sums up the problem. We are in a situation of proportionality. What is the proportionality coefficient? Yes, the proportionality coefficient is the ratio of 2 over 15. Now to find the volume of water that flows in 27 seconds, we multiply 27 by the proportionality coefficient, 2 fifteenths. Multiplying 27 by 2 fifteenths is the same as multiplying 27 by 2 and dividing the result by 15. Back to the equal ratios. To calculate V, we multiply diagonally, and then we divide the result by the third term we get 3.6. So, in 27 seconds, 3.6 liters of water flows from this tap. Now let's find how long it takes 5.6 liters of water to flow from this tap. We can write an equality. 2 over 15 is equal to 5.6 over the unknown duration. We will refer to the duration with the letter D. To find D, I would like to use this table again. What do we need to multiply 2 by to get 15? Yes, we multiply 2 by 15 halves. 
15 halves is the reciprocal of the proportionality coefficient that we have used before. To calculate d, we must multiply 5.6 by 15 over 2. This means that we are multiplying 5.6 by 15 and then dividing the result by 2. In the equality ratios, to calculate the unknown, we multiply diagonally and then divide by the third term. 5.6 times 15 divided by 2 equals 42. The tap must be turned on for 42 seconds for 5.6 liters of water to flow from it. Let's practice calculating the fourth proportional. 36 over 5 is equal to 63 over x. How do we calculate x? Yes, we multiply the terms diagonally and divide by the third term. Do you notice that 63 and 36 are both multiples of 9? After simplifying, calculations become simpler, so we can perform it mentally. 7 times 5 is 35. 35 divided by 4 is 8.75. Here's a second example. 49 over y is equal to 14 over 3. How do we calculate y? Yes, we multiply the terms diagonally and divide by the third term. We can simplify by 7 first. So 7 times 3 divided by 2 equals 10.5. And now let's complete the rest. Z over 15 is equal to 14 over 25. I'll let you try to solve it on your own. We multiply the terms diagonally and divide by the third term. Try simplifying. All right, you will have 3 times 14, which is 42. 42 divided by 5 equals 8.4. So z is equal to 8.4. And finally, calculate t. 11 over 12 is equal to t over 9. Good. First, simplify and then calculate. In this case, we cannot simplify, so we can directly calculate. 11 times 9 divided by 12 equals 8.25. The missing value d is equal to 8.25. Now let's go to the supermarket. You will need your calculator. Choose an item found at the supermarket that can come in different sizes, such as a shampoo bottle. Compare the ratios of the price to the volume of the different bottles. If the ratio is the same, it means that the price is proportional to the volume. Otherwise, choose the most advantageous size. That means the most economical one. Do the same with the offered products of different masses, for example, rice or instant coffee. Warning! The special offers logo could be misleading. You are all experts now. Don't let yourselves be misled. This is the end of our lesson on proportionality. We'll meet again soon with a new lesson. In the meantime, I would like to share with you some links to follow. There you will find exercises that allow you to practice to better understand proportionality. See you soon!